Hey folks, Dr. Ryan Wakeham, psychiatrist in Pittsburgh again. I wanted to follow up on uh, my last video post as it relates to workplace environment, stress, and healthcare outcomes, uh, mental health, physical health, and where we focus our attention as small business owners uh, or leaders in the community or amongst your own uh, employees. So today I'm going to talk about a little bit deeper into the statistics uh, that I had mentioned and a little bit more into um, some different resources we might be able to provide our employees uh, to improve specifically mental health but also physical health outcomes. What the Harvard Business Review pointed out as it pertains to the ERGs is that there are really three things that they achieve uh, for employees and that includes the ability to connect socially, that includes peer support, and that includes education. Those are the top three items that are thought to be uh, the most impactful as it pertains to employee mental health. When we look at the actual statistics around workplace mental health issues, uh, NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, reports that eight out of 10 individuals who struggle with mental health conditions feel shame and guilt about approaching others in the workplace, even HR, on how to cope with that. And that's really where these ERGs can become uh, very beneficial and helpful in improving those mental health related outcomes. In a recent survey, as it pertains to employees in mental health, 88% uh, had reported that they were experiencing moderate to severe anxiety and stress as it related to the pandemic and you know, still trying to achieve work and maybe a, a work life or work home balance as we talked about before with those lines really blurring at this point. As it pertains to the ERGs and what that means or how we process that from the leadership team down, step one is really just that. Uh, the focus on mental health and the resource of an ERG should be presented from senior level leadership uh, down to uh, all of those throughout the, the business or, um, uh, or entity. So uh, the first and most important thing is that you have leadership buy-in and that there's a unified message to the employees and the staff uh, that not only are we focusing on mental health, we're also gonna help provide you the resources to achieve better mental health. Um, through these ERGs and other coping and structure based um, interventions. Step two in the process is uh, once there's leadership buy-in and that unified voice as it pertains to improving mental health uh, in your entire culture and community, the next step really is to start uh, providing those resources uh, and taking action. So, uh, you know, actions speak louder than words. Uh, so if the leadership team begins to uh, offer up different mental health resources as part of a health care benefit, maybe that's a bolt on to your current health care plan. Uh, other options would be you know, providing gym memberships and wellness uh, activities. Um, these are the kinds of things that if we shift the focus from bottom line and we put the focus on the people, on the culture, on the mental health of our staff, uh, or you know, the return on investment on that is, is far higher than you know, saving a dollar on you know, not having an EAP program, uh, not having a resource for one of our staff members, uh, and then burning them uh, in this process. Step three, and arguably the most important step, is to provide that safe harbor, uh, a safe place that uh, employees feel that they can come to uh, vent some of their issues and then gain access to some of these resources. As I mentioned earlier, um, Deloitte did a study that showed that um, our return on investment for providing these kind of resources to our employees can be as high as 11 to one in some instances. So again, just to go over those three steps, step one is leadership buy-in and really coming from the top down. Step two is yeah, you know, actions are louder than words. These are, you know, there's certain things that we can do as leaders or as small business owners uh, to help promote health and wellness amongst our employees. And then step three, you know, arguably, arguably again, one of the most important is providing that shelter, that safe harbor, that space uh, through which our employees can connect with leadership uh, for these resources and for better outcomes. Uh, with, again, a much higher return on investment over time. In closing, 
Uh, if you or your company or your leadership team have any questions or concerns as it pertains to mental health in the workplace or what an ERG might look like or what are some of the next steps uh, in this process, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, as a psychiatrist and a small business owner myself, these are things we deal with day in and day out. This is commonplace for us. We're also very passionate about it for that reason. So again, if you're a leader, small business owner, and you feel like you're at a loss right now, and you need some help in how to really institute a better wellness program for you or your employees, again, we'd be happy to help. Please reach out.